Kingsley L. Dennis, PhD, is a full-time writer and researcher. He's the author of over 20 books. His forthcoming book is The Inversion, How We've Been Tricked into a False Reality. It was published in September 2023. And his chapter in The Great Upshift is Upshifting for the Humanized Technology. So let me ask now Kingsley, Kingsley Dennis, a wonderful co-author, a wonderful collaborator, to, to give us a little bit of an insight into his wisdom. Kingsley. Well, thank you, Irvin, and uh, thank you, Jude, for your for your words of wisdom there. And I'd like to come back to your central point of human meaning. Um, you know, when when Irvin Laszlo and David Lorimer asked me to to uh, contribute uh, my thoughts on the subject of technology, um, I was both pleased and I thought quite awed because technology is one of the most looming subjects of the day. And at the same time, I thought that I would be amiss if I didn't um, also look at the shadow side of technology. Because I think everybody here, everybody here and everybody around the world is very much aware of this kind of growing mega machine, that we say call it, which is coming over the earth. And I like to, um, I'm always reminded of a, of a poem, uh, a book length poem that was published in 1987 by the English poet Heathcote Williams called Autogeddon, writing about the impact of the cars. And one particular section which always stood out for me was when he said, if, if a passing alien species were passing the earth and they decided to have a, have a look in and look down what was happening, if they observed the earth for a little while, that they would perhaps come to the conclusion that the dominant life form, the dominant species on the earth would be cars. And that, and that the, the humans would be like a fuel cell because we see the car st stationary. A human would get in and the car would move. As soon as the human got out, the car would stop. So the conclusion is the dominant life form is the cars because they're everywhere. Everybody needs them. But humans are just a fuel cell. So I thought, well, if we advance that to today and we see this whole ecosystem of technology, both, you know, both visible with all the cables and the infrastructure and also the non-visible side of it. You know, if that passing species were doing another uh, another pass by, they may come to the conclusion again that technology in the ecosystem and the algorithms and the AI, the artificial intellect, would be the dominant species and that humanity is not centric. And I think that's the main point is that we've, we've been given a vision that perhaps technology is the salvation, is the answer. And therefore, we give it a dominant role. But I talk about the, the humanized technology, which means that it, the future and any relationship with technology has to be human-centric. And that technology cannot be the dominant role. And again, if we look at the world around us, we, we perhaps have heard of the Israeli historian uh, Yuval Noah Harari. And he, he has a very prominent platform. And he has said, uh, the major issue of the future is that humans, there's going to be an underclass of irrelevant humans. And I can't, I can't think of anything more demeaning or dehumanizing in that statement. And he actually says, he wrote that in his work, he said, we may see a future of downgraded humans trying to work upgraded computers. Now, if that is ever an upside down view of the world, then that's encapsulated it. I mean, what's so inspiring about the Upshift project is that it puts the humans first. Anything else that's around it is there to facilitate human becoming. And of course, the center of the human becoming is our consciousness, the consciousness that we imbibe and that we project what we receive and what we transmit. Because technology is always going to be a reflection of the human condition. Now, if we have these computer companies working with algorithms and artificial intellect, putting them out there and saying, go, go across the internet, collect all the data you can get. That's how we're training the AI and the algorithms. We're training them because they're going out and they're looking at human behavior. What are we giving them? Now, if that's how we are feeding them, you know, the old computer saying goes, 
garbage in, garbage out. If we are giving them the worst of human nature, how are they going to start creating their artificial intellect? How are they going to start seeing, well, if we become more dominant, how are we going to mimic the, the human species at the moment? So you see, the upshift is not coming, going to come from technology. It's going to come from the correct moral, ethical, value-driven human future and human behavior. And then that gets emanated and projected into everything else around us, into our infrastructure and environment. So any artificial intellect is going to see the best of us and to learn from that. But it has to put the human first. And again, we outsource. We are so used to giving away our dependency by outsourcing ourselves. I feel now we've come to the threshold. We could call it the precipice, but it's a threshold of where we're going to go from here. And if we don't go into deep materialism and the transhumanist path, the threshold has to go to the human-centric path, which means that we need, before we can outsource, we need to insource. We need to actually realize the choices we make, how we use our tools, if we have the internet, if we have our mobile phones. So far, we've been in the, the media and the, the, you know, the entertainment shows the infantile ways of using our technology. Now it's time to grow up. Now it's time, we, we've been in the sand pit, we've played with the toys for a bit. Okay, that's done. Now we need to realize that any technologies we use, we have to put our values into them. We have to have awareness of how am I going to interact with this world around me, including technology. Because technology, yes, it can take away some of our jobs and it is going to do in some areas. But of course, through that can come great human creativity not to replace humans, but to allow us a space to do the things we've always wanted to do. And it can be an enabler and a facilitator. And that means we really need to think about what it is that makes us a human being and what is our purpose. And as we've talked about so far, we are not a singular island, we are a collectivity. And that purpose must be a shared collective well-being. So, you know, if we're going forward from here, um, the upshift is a human-centric one. Humanize everything we come into contact with. But first, we have to insource the human values that we wish to transmit for everything around us, including our technology. So a few opening words. So I, again, appreciate that David Lorimer and Irvin Lazaro gave me the space to, uh, to put those uh, few words out. Thank you very much, Kingsley. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you to everybody. And after listening to everybody, it makes me feel even better to be a human being. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's sometimes we forget how how wonderful and how important and the responsibility is to be a human being. And maybe because we we you know we get too pulled out of ourselves into the world around us, we get too entangled in all these affairs, and then they they you know they take away our perspective, they take away our belief systems, they take away our faith. They take away our faith in ourselves. And, you know, those words you use, sacredness and the spirit, that, you know, the sacred spirit, these are things we need to bring back into our lives. It's almost as if there's recently, in the recent decades, there's been a, like a, you know, a kind of impulse to take away our recognition of the of the spirit. It's like, you know, the magician's trick. The magician pulls a rabbit out the hat Everybody's looking at the rabbit, they don't see what's really going on. What's really going on is the human being is trying to evolve along a, along a pathway with, with the planet, with the universe, with the cosmos, all nested within one another. But because the magician's trick of technology and, and we have this you know, wonderful transhumanist, transhumanist future, we've been distracted. But it's, it's artificial. It's not the real way. We are living within this whole breath of spirit. So when Irvin asked, where, which direction is the universe going? Well, it's going into coherence because everything is trying to go home. We've come out into a reality of, of polarity and separation because then, like all children, we learn to find our way home towards the, the unity, towards the source, towards the sacred. 
And we have to learn a lot of uncomfortable truths along the way. But you see, those uncomfortable truths are also the catalysts that give us the intensity to make choices. Maybe not always the right choices at first, but again, humans have the great capacity to learn from their choices. That's what makes us so resilient and, and so like charming and funny and and everything else as well, because we learn from all the, the byways and avenues of trying to learn how to go home. But we should not get distracted into the wrong pathway, the cul-de-sac, the dead end street, because we're in a huge dreaming. That's the Holy Spirit, is the dreaming of the cosmos. And so we can dream. We have dreamed within dreams, just like the, the well-known Russian doll. You take off one layer, you have another layer, and then another layer. We have dreams within dreams within dreams. But of course, sometimes we can get waylaid or misdirected in our dreams. But we can still look out at the sunset or the sunrise, and we, and we dream of the stars. Um, but don't be... Don't be misdirected. Artificial intellect doesn't dream of the stars in the, like we do. It may see a sunset because it's been programmed. That is a sunset. But does it feel the sunset? I mean, if I say to you, describe to me the taste of an apple. Now, everybody knows what an apple tastes like. I mean, you can feel it in your mouth right now, can't you? It's that apple taste. But you can't. How can you? How can you tell someone what an apple tastes like unless that person has eaten an apple? You can't. It's an experience beyond words. You can program apple taste, um, bitter, sour, but you don't have the experience. We as humans are living through that experiential pathway of having the taste of life. And if you and I have both tasted an apple, we have a connection. We have the references. And that's what makes us a human family is that we're sharing the same references. Now, technology can do wonderful things to help us, but it doesn't share the same references of the human spirit family. And we should take that into account. So we do have a purpose and meaning because we're like a bridge, the cosmos breathing to, breathing to us. We are embodying a material vessel and we breathe out our visions, our dreams, our aspirations into the material world, and we try to create something as well, something that will help us to go home. But we must not be distracted or misdirected to the dead end path that is, that is not truly human, sometimes anti-human in ways. We must realize that, you know, we have those references. We're, we, can, we can put out the blueprints of what we are inside, Technology is a blueprint of our internal connectedness, our internal thirst to speak to one another, our internal thirst and longing to know, to learn, to be. But it's only a resource to help us to gain that experience for ourselves. And that is the truly path, pathway of where the universe is going. We're all going like within, like in the nested, nested realities, the relative, the cosmos, the universe, the solar system, the planet, Humanity, one big family, and we may make mistakes, but I'm positive, and I think everybody on this call is positive because we're sharing a similar vibratory kind of resonance. We know that it's a, it's a human future, and whatever the pushback from the shadow side of human nature and the shadow side of human technology, it's something that will be a catalyst to help us go home faster and to learn from that. <laughs>